having some fun really playing with this new Facebook Live, I get to people, to people from more on the screens of the interview. And today uh, we're going to keep talking about the same thing we talked about last week, which was earth keeping. And last week Sue shared her stories of how she did it and how that flowed through in Rapid Nui, Portis Island. And today we're going to talk more about how you can directly practice earth keeping on your own land. And um, so welcome, Sue. Thank you. And I'm Vaughn, also known as Barbara. And uh, that's a different story of how I got that name. But uh, for today, I'll be, I'll be here. here. And so, Sue, a lot of people who come here they know that we call this place Vortex Johnson because it is actually a vortex. Can you just start uh, by maybe explaining a little bit about what this vortex Well, very similar to human beings, the planet has energy meridians going through it. We have yin and yang energy lines as um, in the Chinese medicine and the earth also has the yin and yang energy lines flowing through them and when there's a big crossing of two powerful lines a vortex forms all the vertical ones are female all the horizontal ones are male or sometimes vice versa whichever way you're facing so Yep, so you have to find your ley line. There's ley lines approximately every 10 metres or small lines, but sometimes there's been bits of work done on them before and they, they've actually grown. So um, you need to know how to douse them and how to find them and how to feel them. And that's basically... Well, I bought this property. I had a, a vision, my one and only vision ever in my life to buy a place here in Tassie. And I just knew that it was seven kilometers as a crow flies from St. Mary's. So I drew a line, a circle around seven kilometers and looked at all the places that were for sale inside that circle. And it took me ages. I looked friend and I came over and looked and looked and looked and we'd given up we only had two more on our list and we stopped at the pancake barn and had some lunch because the last two to look at were down the dirt road just past the pancake barn and so we had a lovely lunch and then jumped back in the car and head down Delmain Road and the first place was dark covered in heavy timber very very wet way beyond anything I could do with it and really quite small and so we didn't look at that much longer we kept going and the next place we found for sale was way out of my league it had a beautiful big three-bedroom house on tennis court everything else no that one <laughs> couldn't quite afford that one and we couldn't turn around so I kept driving and we got deeper into the bush and I thought whoa <laughs> um we should turn around and we couldn't turn around so we kept driving we went over this little rickety old bridge and up a very steep hill and when we got to the top of the steep hill this magnificent vista of the ocean appeared and I thought oh wow look at that and we kept driving we, we went to turn around in a driveway there and it had prosecutors will be sh trespassers will be shot so we kept going <laughs> And the next one that I turned around in, one we could turn around in. What? Sorry? Yeah. But anyway, we got, I turned into a little driveway and it had a little painted sign swinging on this very decrepit fence saying for sale by owner. And I thought, this is it. And so, you know, to cut a long story short, I ended up buying it there was a lot of coincidences and 
really weird happenings to get here and eventually I got here and I bought the land and I wasn't ready to move over. I had problems with my father. He was getting the early stages of dementia so we needed to be there and couldn't leave it all to my sister to do and so it was six years nearly before I could move over. But in the meantime, I bought an old caravan so I could come over on the weekend and and holidays. And I parked it behind this huge old laurel tree that's on the property. And because it, well, I had been camping and it rained and then everything was just saturated. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is so nice to get into a, a dry, warm bed. And I looked at the ceiling. I thought, whoa, that's all purple. Why is it roof purple? Why can't I sleep? <laughs> I'm bouncing around here off the walls. This is, feels really nice, but wow, I don't need to sleep. So I bet I parked on a ley line. And so sure enough, I got out the trusty coat hanger the next morning and um, there it was right under the bed <laughs> with a caravan. So it was a small, small ley line. It was about six inches wide. I say small, that's quite a big one, but it's a small one compared to what it is today. It's over 250 metres wide now. That's huge. Where, where the vortex formed, there's a crossing of another line, which they call the Hartman line. The negative lines are called Hartman lines. And the negative line crossed the big vortex, a uh, big um, ley line that I'd parked the caravan on. And the more I used it, the more the energy from both lines was flowing into it. So eventually, a small vortex formed, but it didn't form on the line. It formed back, well, probably about 10 metres away from it, and a corresponding male vortex formed on the other side of it. So we had a female and a male one. But again, as we used the, the line more and did more meditation and more, um, more little ceremonies when the vortex, when the solstices and equinoxes were around and things like that on special days. It all adds to their energy. And then I just was having friend, having um, dinner with my friend one night. We put up the teepee all day and we sat down there eating some stew that she'd had and drinking red wine and in front of our little fire. And she said, oh, she said, my right leg's gone all funny and starting to tingle. And I thought, oh, my left leg's gone all funny and starting to tingle. And we looked at each other and thought, we've got to blend the vortex. So I went and stood on the small female one, and my friend Joe went and stood on the male one. And then we could feel the two of them being drawn together. And this created the big vortex that's there now. And most vortexes are either male or female the difference which was your original question is that mine has or the vortex here on the property has male female rings concentric rings of male and female energy the male and female haven't blended and become one they've stayed separate but become one as such so it's a male female vortex which creates a rift in the ether. We've got energy going in concentric rings, anti-clockwise for the female and clockwise for the male. So it's clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, and anti-clockwise. And that creates a rift in the ether. When you feel, when you stand on the vortex, which, which is our favorite trick, because everyone says, oh, I don't believe in any of this stuff. Nah can't work, no, nah, don't feel anything, never feel anything. You tell them to stand in the vortex area and close their eyes and pretty soon they'll be full, pulled forwards or backwards depending on which ring they're, like, they're standing on. So we then ask them to take a step forward or backwards and 
they will be pulled in the opposite direction as they, they stand on another ring. So you can easily find this vortex now because of the, the conflicting rings. Well, my favourite way of finding the energy lines is using an old coat hanger, a steel coat, coat hanger or a metal coat hanger because they swing easily from side to side and they'll let you know what line you're on, whether it's a male one or a female. Like if it's a male, it'll swing right. If it's a female line, it'll swing left. And you can walk across it and it'll swing right or left so you know, okay, I'm on the male line or the female line. But if it swings both ways you know you're on a male-female vortex. Now that really is quite wet, rare. What you will find is that in the beginning when you first use your, your vortex or find a vortex area crossing of lines, you will find um, that the vortex takes on a male or female role. But as you use it more, it can develop. First, first you have to ask. Yeah, first you need to program it because a, a coat hanger will work on the, the differences in the energy in, in the earth. Like if you walk over an underground creek, there's an interruption in the gravity flow, so it will either swing left or, or just become still for a moment. Then you walk on and it'll start moving again. The interruption to the gravity flow and, and the magnetic flow, more importantly, is what the, the coat hanger um, responds to. So when you, you set out to find an energy line, you, you say, okay, coat hanger, please show me a ley line. Water, obviously. You can find water and you can find out how deep it is. And um, you can actually ask you, we, we, we laughingly in our meditation group that we used to have um, called it the Oracle of the Coat Hanger because we could ask it questions and it would give us a yes or no answer. So there's anything you can program it for. Each, each energy, like a yes energy, has a different... Um, gravitational pull and, and no energy. It's similar to muscle muscle testing, and it's it's more like a pendulum. But pendulums, I find, you can easily manipulate. Oh, I think there's a ley line right here, so it will respond because it picks up on your positive energy.
On top of the energy lines. If they do enough work and enough um, sacred stuff, yes, they will draw energies to it. And so a line forms and if you're doing it the right way, you will end up with a very um, workable vortex, a higher energy vortex. Yeah, the, it's it's difficult, isn't it? They're, they don't really make mistakes, but they don't really listen. The only thing you can go wrong on is not listening. Think, oh, well, that was the wind blowing the coat hanger or that was me doing that. I could actually feel myself moving it or... Yeah, it worked, but I don't know. I don't trust it. And you immediately put a negative slant on it and the coat hanger will swing the other way. So it's, again, you've, you've got to learn to listen. The biggest thing in life is to learn to listen. And you don't just listen with your ears. You listen with every cell in your body. Each, each cell, as we have all been told by scientists, has its own intelligence, and it does. I know I listen with all of my body when I'm out, like when I was at Easter Island recently, we had to find the energy line. Well, we got out the car and thought, wow, here it is. That was a very, very obvious one. But not all of them are like that. But Easter Island is a very pure place. And many of the um, big vortexes around the world have all been... Um, used widely by all and sundry and not for good reasons sometimes and some for well-meaning reasons but not proper ones you know it's the, and they get polluted easter island's totally pure tasmania is totally pure but a lot of them aren't uluru's tainted egypt is certainly tainted france is pretty good um, you know, of, of the big ones we've been to, Mount Shasta was very tainted. We have to actually get dragged off the beaten path for that one. Sorry, I didn't hear that last bit. Just people using it wrongly, you know, people with low vibrating energy on there all the time and people using it for their own good saying, okay, Vortex, I'm going to draw this energy in and use it to get rich, to get, you know, to get power over people. Mostly it's used for power, is tainting it. Yeah, and that's very, very difficult because these people are very well-meaning and there's a lot of people going to places and doing ceremonies and leaving crystals. And that's that's my pet hate, people leaving crystals everywhere because you don't know where the crystals have been or how they've been programmed or who's been handling them and what vibrations they're carrying. You can actually take from the um, purity of places. Now, I have been known to leave a few crystals at places but they're the ones that I travel with for that express purpose and they are pure they're totally cleansed on the vortex and they're all programmed to return to the vortex 
the energy and created a line to that particular spot I've placed them. They're very special crystals and they're only used for that one um, specific purpose. And making essences. I'm only hearing you from downstairs, actually. I'm not hearing you on the computer, so. Yeah, we've got the um, some of the 13 grandmothers of Australia coming down. We're having our annual general meeting here and um, unfortunately not all of them can come but we're going to have a good time anyway. But Sunday we're going to have an open day here where you'll meet and greet and talk to them and ask any questions you want to. They will talk to you or give a little talk um, and then we'll all go around the power sites or walk the very powerful labyrinths that we have on the place now. There'll be lots of exciting things and at the end of the day we're going to have the most beautiful crystal sound bath with the lovely Leela and Sharon. Mm, it's absolutely magnificent. Bye-bye.